Welcome, welcome to Empowering Seniors, the web series. I'm Katherine Ambrose, your host, and I have the pleasure of having Dee Haskins on, and she is an expert on how to cut the paper clutter and paperwork preparedness. So most of us end up with way too many papers. And for seniors especially, this can be uh, something very stressful. They can be stressed about it. Their family's stressed about it. And um, just getting rid of all the extra stuff you don't need and getting the stuff that you do need organized is very important. And you can do that on your own. You can have family help you or you can have like a miracle person like Dee Haskins come in and help you. Welcome Dee, thank you for joining us. Thank you, it's a pleasure. So uh, we're very fortunate to have you here in Wichita, Kansas to help our real estate clients and our downsizing clients. And you and I have been talking about the services that you provide. There's gotta be other people that do this in other parts of the country. If not, we certainly would recommend if you're thinking that this might be a business that you'd like, get with Dee and do some brainstorming because this is tremendously beneficial. So we're gonna jump right into the material. Dee, Tell us how we can cut the paper clutter. Well, um, I have a PowerPoint that we can look at as I speak, if you'd like. That's fantastic. Um, okay, you can share my uh, screen if you like, and I'll go ahead and put that up. Okay, I think you can do that on your, on your end. On my end? Okay, share screen, got it. Okay. And so we're making time at the home alone during the pandemic, learning new things. And thanks for playing with us, Dee, and sharing your wisdom. I'm excited that people all across the country and beyond could benefit from your local wisdom that we have here. Okay, well, let's go. Thank you. Well, um, I have had many clients who have already felt that they are maybe pretty well organized, and yet they've called me in to help them. And we have found that um, uh, hold on, that they end up with little pieces of paper all, all over the house. Mm -hmm. um, they're scattered in the kitchen or in their office. The best method that I have found is to take a box and take every single piece of paper from all around the house and put it in that box. If it's too much for one box, we do two or three boxes. Um, and then uh, from there, I sit with the client and the client goes through and looks at each piece of paper. We go, we look at every single piece of paper. If it needs to be shredded, we put in a shred box and I take that away from their house so they don't have to worry about it anymore. But with each piece, we look at it and say, okay, do you already have a file for this? And usually I'll put it in a box in front of us, all of their current files. And we're, we'll either add to those files or put that piece of paper in the file they already have. Um, I found that um, usually I go from a, a small box and it ends up getting bigger and bigger and sometimes ends up being two boxes. And I, I bring the materials for hanging files and I put the tab on it that says what that hanging file should be called. Okay. And so it's a teamwork effort. I work with the clients so that they know where everything is sorted and and established. So okay, so um, you're you're helping them step by step. They're making the decisions and you're guiding them along and you're teaching them an organization system. And I don't know if it's just me, but I think your mic is going out a little bit here and there. So you might get pretty close to your mic and um, make sure we're getting good audio if you if you can. Okay, can you hear that better? Yes. Okay, good. So um, putting the documents in a, in a box kind of gets it out of the rest of the house and already they feel better when that happens. Okay. <laughs> okay, and we end up putting it in either hanging files or sometimes we put it in binders or notebooks as you see here. Mm -hmm. um, everybody has a different personality so they have a different thing that works for them. Mm -hmm. and some people like things where they can see it on their desk. They have to have everything out in piles, but everything out. So I work with that um, type of personality as well. Um, most of the people usually like this hanging file uh, system. 
and I bring all of the materials necessary. I bring the files, I bring the tabs, and we work with um, the files that they already have and continue with that. <clears throat> or in one case, we just started fresh. Um, I like that. I like the binders too because it just looks like if your kids needed to help you with something or you wanted to take stuff with you, it's very mobile and you can just grab your one year that you need or however many you want to take with you, but it's very easy and uh, it's all bound in there so it's not going to go flying all over the place. Right. Well, um, actually this is, um, I want to explain that there's uh, we sometimes use this system with both the binders and the hanging files for most people. Everything that goes in the binder are the kinds of things that the tax preparer needs. So let's say it's um, <clears throat> usually at the front, I put in sleeves all of the tax documents that came, all the W-2s, the 1099s, um, things that the tax preparer will need. We usually put in a sleeve in the front of the binder. And then each of the investments that they have, let's say they have a bank account or a savings account, uh, checking and savings. We'll divide the binder into those financial sections, okay? okay. So um, it's not bills paid, it's just statements, like statements for your 401k, statements for your IRA, statements for your investments. Uh, TD Ameritrade, things like that. And so we have a tab inside the binder for each of those topics, okay? And that is the financial binder for that year because that information you end up taking to the tax preparer and they love having that backup along with the documents that they have needed in case they need to look back at a certain check and like let's say you paid the IRS a check they can look back on that month and see, oh, in the statement, there's a picture of your check. Okay, you did do that, right? Let's say the IRS forgot to record it or something. They can see that it cleared and they can figure it out. So all of uh, the tax papers and papers having to do with financial information that the tax preparer needs goes in the binder. The things that go in the hanging file usually are things like, um, uh, insurance documents, um, anything having to do with, let's say they have rental homes, or, um, have the documents regarding those rental homes in there if it's not a financial thing. It'll go in the book if it has to do with um, things that the tax preparer will need to know about those financial things. Okay. Like, say, um, like uh, rental agreements or um, uh, things that are needed like that go in the hanging file. So, uh, and you'll have th people wanted um, like memories or games or um, uh, Christmas lists or things like that will go in this hanging file, whereas all the financial information will go in the notebook. That way, because you only need to hold on for tax documents for seven years, mostly, that's a general perspective. Um, then at the end of the seventh year, you can take everything out of that eighth file, out of that eighth binder, put it in the shredder and reuse that notebook for the next year. So it's a rotating system so that you just have those seven years on the, on the shelf and then you can rotate them. Okay. Does that okay. Do you understand that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So the biggest questions I've had are how long should I keep records? In the IRS, can you see this? Yeah. Okay, it's an IRS document. And from that, it basically says for individuals, a good rule of thumb, keep tax returns for seven years. If you own property, however, you need to keep the record, like rental properties, you need to keep the records relating to the property until you dispose of the property to figure out depreciation, amortization, and uh, gains or losses and things like that. Okay. So the second top question is, what do I do about my digital assets? In this day and age when we have so many passwords to remember and all of that, um, we can talk with each individual, figure out what works for them, whether they really want it on paper. We have spreadsheets we can use for that to help them put everything down, um, or we can figure out electronically. Here's a, a 
uh, website, I guess, for privacy tools, different software packages that you can do. I'm afraid of touching that button because I'm afraid I won't be able to get back to this. Okay. <laughs> You can look at that. Um, we also have suggestions for legal remedies for your heirs and executors to access your important digital documents in case of your death. Um, if, if something does occur where you're either incapacitated or can't um, remember your passwords for some reason, um, there is a legal remedy. If you have your attorney um, write up for you a power of attorney for uh, digital assets, um, or talk, really talk with your attorney. I am not an attorney. I do not give legal advice. So if you give your attorney um, an idea of what it is you'd like to accomplish, um, some people have cryptocurrencies which require, um, the only way you can get those back into dollars is if you have that long um, password that you need to put into a certain wallet so that you can get that information if it needs to be liquidated. Okay. So uh, there's a lot of things that you need to do to be able to access those if you have a power of attorney or if you're a trustee of a trust or things like that. So you really need to talk to your lawyer about that to get the proper document. Otherwise, um, some of those assets are gone forever. So it's important. Um, then people ask me, where should I keep my important papers? Well, what are those kinds of important papers? Um, you have powers of attorney, for example, for healthcare or finance. Um, under health, if somebody had, if let's say I had my power of attorney for my parents, okay, um, I would need their Medicare card, their Social Security card, their health insurance card. I would need that information to be able to allow the insurance company to pay for whatever procedure or thing that they're needing to have done in the hospital. Yes. So um, though that's a bunch of important papers. We file all these in binders and notebooks so that you can have them in one place for your power of attorney. Um, there's power of attorney for finance. Um, let's say I was taking care of my parents' finances. I would need their banking information, their investments, their IRAs, if something had happened to them. And I was suddenly the power of attorney for finance. So um, those documents will be going into those binders or notebooks in order to be able to pers um, pers the, the children or um, my in internet connection is unstable, it said. Can you still hear me okay? I, I can. I'm, okay. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, okay. you want to be real close to that mic. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, are you hearing me okay? Yes, I am now. Yes. Okay. So um, another... Said, we have 42 essential estate planning documents. We have a list that I go through and put them in the notebook for people. But these are just examples of some of the things that go into that notebook. So in wills and trusts, um, I don't know if people understand, but wills are public information. Um, trusts are not. So if you're wanting to leave um, your um, heirs uh, or beneficiaries or trust, you know, somebody, if you're wanting to leave money to somebody in a trust is the best way to do it because then it does not become public information. It stays private. Um, you will need to talk again to your lawyer to make sure that you have the proper um, document to do what it is you wanna do for your successors, your beneficiaries, your children, your next of kin. Um, so in this notebook, we put successor trustee contact information. We put beneficiary contact information and next of kin information so that in the, let's say you passed away, um, people aren't scrambling to find the second cousin of grandma, <laughs> you know, so-and-so. So, -and -so. so right. it, it allows us to have all of that information in one place. Another thing that goes in these documents is the insurance. Um, a lot of times uh, you will need to have uh, either the life insurance or the medical insurance or the automobile insurance handy for whoever is helping you through a difficult time or in the case of your demise. So um, all of that information needs to be in the document. Um, and I have found, I had a client where I went through all of his documents and we found out that um, he had a life insurance policy that was being auto paid 
um, out of his bank account. And he had been paying for years and years and years ever since the Korean War. And that life insurance policy was no longer needed. Um, he was 94 and that life insurance policy termed, it was a term life insurance policy, not a whole life, term life. And it would term or terminate at age 96, which was just two years away. And we saved him a bunch of money in the next two years of premiums by canceling that and getting the a majority of that life insurance policy sent to his bank account. So um, by the way, I wanna mention that I am bonded and insured so that, um, that I am honest. And so I, I never take anything from anybody. In fact, because I, before we did all of this for that gentleman who had the life insurance term life policy, um, I called his daughter and said, look, and actually I followed up with a letter saying he has these three insurance policies, this one, and I explained about the life insurance, and it got her permission to go ahead and work with him because he is elderly and does have a memory issue. Um, not all the time, I mean, he's really pretty good, but um, he has enough of a memory issue that I wanted her to know what we were doing so that she would know. Yeah, and so, feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. And feel comfortable. And know that, you're, that your working has a fiduciary for him and the family to help uh, do the best possible work. Exactly. And so she's been very grateful. And with anything major, I always call her and say, look, we're about to do this. Just wanted to let you know. So I try to connect with the family of my clients so that they know exactly what's happening. So there's never any question about it. Okay. So, yeah. And um, so, uh, and also in, in some of his, in his other two life insurance policies, um, her beneficiary information had the incorrect address on it. So again, I talked with her and said, is it, oh, because you have to have the client there, the person who created the life insurance policy, you have to have them on the phone with the life insurance company, otherwise they'll never change anything. So by having him right there with me, we made the phone calls and we're able to change those addresses to where his daughter lives now. Mm -hmm. So um, those sorts of things always need to be updated. Yeah. And, and these are the things that are also in that notebook. So I was just going to add that if you have life insurance or long-term care insurance, make sure that you do not cancel anything or change your policy without really, really being careful and, and maybe consulting with a trusted family member or advisor so that you are not trying to just cut your bill down and inadvertently um, lessening your coverage. So right. that's very important. If you have a, a long-term care insurance policy, don't mess with it unless you are working with a professional like D or someone that specializes in that arena. Yes, and because my background is in bookkeeping, I've been a bookkeeper since, well, a really long time. <laughs> I, I'm a graduate um, of a four-year college and my um, graduate degree was in business. And um, my dad was an auditor. And so um, I, I know some of the things I'm supposed to be looking for um, when, you know, to see if things are out of order or whatever, or out of whack. So I make sure that the family members know these things also. So these are some of the um, important documents that you need to put in the binder. Um, this is a sample binder. Um, I can't see myself, but I'm going to show you something. This is that sample binder. Can you see it okay? Yes. Uh, okay. And so inside we have, okay, so for example, um, we have marriage licenses. Um, I discovered that um, if you've been married more than once and your ex-spouse has more social security than you or your current spouse and your current spouse passes away and um, you were married to that individual for more than 10 years, the first husband, then 
at his passing, you're entitled to his social security. So that's why the marriage licenses and the divorce documents are really important to have so that you can prove to the, um, well, the social security office that you were married, how long you were married, and that you have the ability to have that, that social security. So these are the sorts of things that, and please always check with your social security agent, not me, <laughs> to, to get this information from them. But this is what I have understood. Um, and so these are also important documents to put in this binder. Well, that's a we have some, there's some crazy going on with your sound when I talk there's a sound that comes from your end but anyway I was just going to say that um it's important to check with professionals that specialize in some of these different things too because that's a hidden gem that a lot of people might not know and so there can be resources out there that can be absolutely life-saving or life-changing for you if you maybe got some help exploring it. So make sure you're being resourceful and checking with people that can help you uncover all of the opportunities that might be out there that can make a complete difference for you or your dad or someone. So just know that, that all of these senior empowering topics are so complicated and it kind of takes a village and um, it's important to really do your homework. Right, exactly. And um, where to keep this notebook has been a question in many people's minds. Um, some people feel that their home is safe enough. Personally, I think that it's important to put, if you have a safe at home, put this document in the safe and make sure that your trustee or power of attorney has that safe combination so they can get this notebook. You can leave it on the shelf in your, in your house, um, but it has such, Mm, I would call it uh, delicate information or confidential information that I would be more inclined to put it in the safe deposit box or in a safe. And it might uh, be safer from flood and fire and just exactly. things that can happen. Okay. And I was in a tornado and I understand about losing things that are important. To replace mm -hmm. all of those things are really, is really yeah. difficult. So I would so, imagine you could make a duplicate copy of everything in there also to provide it, uh, provide a copy to your daughter or to have maybe one at home that you can access in one in your safe deposit box. Yes, and I did that for one client. She wanted her daughter to have everything. So I made a copy of everything she had in her notebook and gave it to her daughter. Very good. So, yeah. And then... We are keeping in touch with our current clients during this pandemic. I have, um, the other day, there was an 89 year old client of mine who um, was, uh, I ended up talking to her about a piece of paper that she was looking for that we had filed. And I said, well, let me see your, um, your files. And cause I remember that file. I just don't remember exactly what tab we put that under. And so, I called her on the phone and showed her how to press FaceTime. Can you see that on the screen? Yeah. To press FaceTime right there. And she was able, and then there's a thing called flip. She was able to flip it. So instead of looking at her, I was looking at the, um, the whole box of papers and hanging files. And we went through it and we found it under insurance. Very good. Insurance claim. And that's that a had. good reason to um, make sure you're staying up a little bit with technology and that you have a better phone uh, and that you encourage your parents to have a better phone so they have the ability to communicate well with you as family members and with professionals. There's going to be a lot of nursing and medical things that can be done via your camera on your phone. And so it's, it really is important to upgrade with technology and have a good phone. Right. And then of course you and I are on Zoom right now and a lot of family members are um, really enjoying getting on Zoom. That same 89 year old woman was on a, a family call with, you know, cousins and every, she said there were, I think 14 people on it. And so they were able to have a nice, family get together without with it and still just uh, social distancing. That's so good. that was fun for them. Okay. So, 
So, um, and then we are empowering seniors to learn new skills like finding out about how to um, use that FaceTime and Zoom. So let's keep in touch with our loved ones, our clients, and our associates. And I think I've used up my time, Catherine. Hey, thank you so much. You know, I'm sure you've gone into um, clients' homes and found that they just had so much paperwork, uh, just hung on to way more than what they needed. So helping them shred it and do all that's so great. And we see people that keep loads and loads of um, cardboard boxes. And so if you're wondering what you can do during the pandemic when you're safe at home, um, working on your paperwork, throwing out uh, cardboard boxes that you've been saving, those are some things that you could be doing. The cardboard boxes are probably not going to get used, and in the meantime, they're collecting spiders and all kinds of things we probably won't, don't want to think about. And when you move, we don't tend to use the boxes that people have kept, and they just end up going in the trash anyway. So, um, so that's something you can do to kind of cut some of the paper clutter and just clutter around your house and have a better environment. So a lot of people are at home working on uh, fixing up their house and doing projects. And so cutting the paper clutter and just any clutter um, is great. So Dee, thank you for those tips. And I don't know if you can see my phone number. Yes. If you need help decluttering. 316-409-3371. Yeah. All right. Dee, thank you so much. Have a great day. We appreciate the valuable information. I'm going to turn off the recording um, because that's what we have. So thank you so much for tuning in and I hope you'll watch again.